all right, in regards to uh, a number of claims that Ken has made, we're going to first touch upon uh, Luther and uh, even deal a little bit with Calvin, where we see that uh, if we examine what Luther has said, Luther never held to the usage of anomnesis in the ancient Catholic sense, and no Catholic has ever held to that. So uh, that part of the argument in regards to the new mass and it being a mere memorial and the Lutheran sense is just an irrelevant argument. The ICEL did not instill any Protestant principles in the mass. And if Ken wants to claim that this is a valid argument, he needs to deal with the fact that Calvin and Luther both rejected the usage of the nomnesis in the Catholic sense and went right to the usage of the Greek form from John of Tetelestai. And this is a passage that is always brought up against Catholics. If Ken wants to quote one million people that say that the new mass is Protestant, we need to find out how this can be acceptable. If Protestants always harp on the usage of that uh, Greek term, in spe- specifically in opposition to the usage of an omnesis used by Trent, specifically referencing Luke 22. Later on, we will deal with the doctors, uh, uh, a few of the doctors as well. Uh, I think Ken brought up a few of them. But, um, excuse me, uh, we need to once more go right back to it. If we need to go even more in depth, We'll do it later. But for Ken to understand here, we're going to read one little portion of what the Catechism of Trent says. The Catechism of Trent does pretty much tell us that that is all that is needed for the form. The Catechism says pretty much, for instance, a literal translation of the Latin that deals with the form of the wine says, For it is evident that in those words which signify the substance of the wine to be converted into the blood of the Lord, the form of this element is contained. But if, if Ken wants to continue talking about the, the Catechism of Trent, we can go into that further. But now I'm going to briefly touch upon uh, De Defectibus. And uh, I'm not sure if Ken has read these arguments put forth by my friend Mike Duddy, but I'm pretty much going to quote what Mike Duddy says in regards to this. And in fact, Mike Duddy has presented this argument to Pat Omler himself and to a number of state of contests. And once again, hopefully a number of responses will come, hopefully even from the CMRI camp. What must be noted from De Defectibus is that there are three things to be noticed. One, no word is De Defectibus tell us which words in the, in the cited form are essential and which are not. Two, no word is De Defectibus tell us the meaning of any word or phrase in the cited form. But the De Defectibus does remind us that a distinction needs to be made between changes that change the meaning and changes that do not change the meaning. The words shorten anything and change anything are first conditioned by the preceding words, when something is lacking, which is required for the integrity of the words and the consecration itself, and secondly, by, and if by the change, the words do not signify the same thing. Thus a statement, and if by the change, the words do not signify the same thing, he would not confect the sacrament, needs to be read not in isolation, but within the context of the sentence before, and the sentence following, which says, if in fact one should add or subtract anything which would not change the meaning, which, which would not change the meaning, he would confect it. As a result, a judgment has to be made by the priest. In fact, two judgments. One, does a verbal error just made in, involve the essential or non-essential? Two, if it involves the essential, does it change the meaning? Since the date effective us doesn't give the answer to either question, the priest will have to reflect in the theology he learned elsewhere. I would bet in that, and this, of course, is coming from Mike, I would bet in the error immediately following the Council of Trent, most priests probably reflected in the catechism. And thus, base their judgment on its statement that the short form suffices. In the practical order, then, the church has already set a precedent, the horse out of the barn, basically. Since, however, during the last couple of centuries anyway, most theologians have shifted their focus away from the catechism, priests would now base their precautionary practice upon the advice given in the manuals of moral theology, as cited uh, as cited before, and of course... um. In the relevant area, I'm sure Ken will be able to deal with it later. He's uh, mentioning a number of arguments that are put forth by Bishop Piverunas. Uh, Mike goes on to point out that it would seem then the day defective is like the manuals referred to above is basically a practical and precautionary guide to aid priests in the practical order, a guide based upon accepted principles of moral theology. Now we can go uh, into a number of, a number of other topics. I uh, Earlier, uh, Ken brought up um, the union of the faithful, uh, pretty much dealing with uh, saying that uh, for all, I believe, it, hopefully in, in the next portion, Ken will be able to bring up, I believe that his argument, I don't want to misrepresent him, is that um, for all does not, does not bring about the union of the faithful. 
and uh, this argument is brought about by a number of state of a contest, Pat Omler, uh, the Diamond Brothers, CMRI, Piverunis, and now Ken Bird, of course, uh, follow the same trend that um, it, I'm not sure if Ken means that if we don't have four many, it isn't about a brought about, or just the fact that for all is there, that this does not bring about uh, the union of the faithful with Christ. We'll get into that more in depth. And a number, uh, a number of other things. Uh, Ken uh, has asked he'd like to see where the church has ever pretty much pointed out that this is my body and this is my blood brings about a valid, uh, a valid uh, Eucharistic sacrifice. Uh, we'll definitely be going into that later. Of course, uh, once again, I'll point out the church, how the church has not infallibly defined the words of consecration, but we will go in depth and see what the what the early church has said about this. What has the church said? is needed to bring about a valid sacrament. And we will especially deal with the apostolic fathers as well. I will now surrender uh, the rest of my time. All right. That was, what, about six minutes?